Hello students, let's talk about a literary term, Ode. Ode is a formal lyric poem which expresses the thoughts, emotions and feelings of, of a poet which are addressed to a particular entity or a person in, a, in an exalted and enthusiastic manner. It means that the ode is an elaborate lyric, it, it is a musical poem, uh, it is a poem which can be sung to the accompaniment of a musical instrument and it is elaborate, it means that it is of considerable length, it is not very short and it is not very len len lengthy, like uh, it is not very short like a sonnet or a haiku or it is not very lengthy like, like an epic. It has considerable length and it is expressed in an, in, in an elevated language, elevated style and elevated language, which is imaginative, dignified and sincere. So an ode is a formal poem. It is a lyric poem. It is an elaborate poem, elaborate formal lyric poem. Now, uh, originally speaking, ode comes from a Greek uh, ode, ode comes from Greek origin. In ancient Greek, odes were used in dramatic poetry. They were part of dramatic poetry, and uh, the ode was uh, choral in quality. It means that it was sung by a group of singers, and uh, odes were those odes, Greek odes, classical odes were divided into three parts: strophe, antistrophe, and Apud. Uh, these three parts formed the movement of the chorus, the movement of the choral singers, uh, the dancing movements of the singers. And uh, this was the form used by the Greek poet Pindar. Uh, he lived uh, from 1552 to 442 before Christ and uh, before Common Era. And uh, he wrote odes, which celebrated public occasions, which celebrated public occasions, public figures, uh, athletes, and uh, and other historical person persons. And uh, then there are Horatian odes, uh, which are of Latin origin. Latin was. Uh, the courtly language, the formal language of Roman Empire, and Horace lived from 16.5 to 8 BC before Christ, before Common Era. And uh, Horatian odes, the odes written by Horace were of private and personal kind, which consisted of a number of uniform stanzas. So, uh, <clears throat> as far as we have discussed ode. We have come to know that it is an elaborately formal lyric poem and which is a lengthy ceremonious address to a person or abstract entity. Ode is addressed to a particular person, to a particular entity. For example, John Keats addresses an urn, an ode on a Grecian urn. And uh, a season is addressed by him in to autumn and likewise Perse Shelley addresses the west wind in Ode to the West Wind and uh, the Skylark in, in, in his Ode to, uh, to, to Skylark and so an Ode is always serious and elevated in tone. It is written in a serious manner in formal language in elevated style. And uh, the two kinds of odes are Greek or the choral ode of Pindar, which he wrote, uh, which he devoted to public praise of athletes. And uh, on the other hand, Horace in the Roman Empire, he wrote private and uh, reflective odes in Latin language. So, Horace wrote literary odes and his stanza form was regular, regular stanzas, written regular stanzas and uh, later Horatian model was uh, followed by John Keats 
in which uh, regularly repeated stanzas were used by John Keats in his uh, celebrated odes like Ode on a Grecian Urn, Ode to a Nightingale. Nighting and there is another form of ode which developed in England, which is called, uh, called Irregular Ode. Irregular Ode uh, with varying lengths of strophes was introduced by Abram Cowley's Pindaric Odes. Uh, this work by Abram Cowley came, came in 1656. Abram Cowley wrote this work, Pindaric Odes, in 1656. And uh, he developed a model of uh, Pindaric Odes, uh, in which he did not follow Pindar uh, literally. He made some changes. He made some uh, changes and he produced he prepared a model of classical odes for for English poets and uh, he himself wrote some odes on that model and uh, his model Abram Cowley's model was followed by John Dryden, William Collins and Will William Wordsworth. For example, William Wordsworth's uh, Intimations of Immortality, uh, which came out in 1807, is an example of Cowlian Ode. Uh, so, it means that there is a Greek Ode or Choral Ode by Pinder, and there is Horatian Ode by Horace, and there is an Irregular Ode which is, uh, uh, which is based on Pindaric model, but different from Pindaric model in that, uh, uh, in, in the stanza form, in the length of lines, because it, it uses irregular lines. So these are the three types. These are the three types of odes. And uh, I hope you got the point. Thank you for listening.